everybody. Thank you for joining me again. If you're new to my channel, my name is Janice. Today I have some fun crafts, DIYs for everybody, a mixture of Halloween, traditional, spooky, something for everyone. I am also doing a giveaway and I have four extra calendars. So I'm going to do a giveaway that's going to end October 7th. All you have to do is leave a comment. Those are the calendars I have available that I'm showing right now. So good luck everybody and let's start crafting. So for this first DIY, I took this Dollar Tree pumpkin, this paper I got from Hobby Lobby, and these what what they call window clings, and these two signs that I got from Dollar Tree. Everything basically except the paper. So I'm just going to take the tags off the signs right now and then I'm going to start painting. So before I can start painting I'm going to take these two signs put them together and I'm going to take some popsicle sticks and I'm going to glue them in the back. This is going to support it so this way I can use the signs together. So now I'm just taking some hot glue, putting a strip in the back of the popsicle sticks and applying it to the boards. So now I'm going to take some of this cardstock that I got from Hobby Lobby and um, trace out the pumpkin. Um, I was debating if I should use this or just use nothing. <laughs> so I'm just going to try to cover the back of it so the eyes and the mouth are covered. So now I'm going to paint the sign with the colors orange and flag red. I'm going to mix them together to get a little bit of a deeper orange. Now I'm going to take the pump and use the black chalkboard paint and I'm going to apply it all over the pumpkin. Now that the signs are dry, I'm going to take these window clings and I'm going to start positioning them on the board. So I was debating if I should just leave the pumpkin on the board with the orange popping through it or should I use the cardstock? I was going back and forth. <laughs> I was They both look good actually, but I didn't, I wanted something more to actually pop out at you. So I went with the cardstock. So now I glued down the pumpkin. Now I'm going to take my hot glue gun and I'm going to position it on the board so this way I know where to put the wording um, on the board so I have enough room for everything. Now that I have everything set where I want it, I'm going to take my uh, glue gun, not glue gun, glue stick and start laying down everything. Now I'm grabbing some uh, raffia, not raffia, yeah raffia, oh my god. And I put a little bit in between and I'm just taking some of the jute twine and wrapping them all together. So now that I have it placed, I took some hot glue and glued the back of it and then placed it back onto the sign and it looks so cute. I'm also trimming the edges to make it clean and cute.
And this is what it looks like. I think it came out so, so cute. What do you guys think? Okay, for this DIY, I took these little cubes from Dollar Tree. I'm using this Caribbean blue, I think it's called, and the white Waverly chalk paint. And I got these from Dollar Tree as well. It came in a package. Um, <clears throat> this one right here, I bought that from Home Depot. I think it was six foot and I had them cut it down for me. So now I'm gonna take the white Waverly chalk paint and I'm gonna paint this uh, piece of wood. So I'm going to take this Caribbean blue paint and I'm going to paint the three little cubes with it. It's such a pretty color. I decided to go with this color. I think it goes very well with orange. I think it's very pretty. So now I'm going to finish most of them off camera. I don't want to bore you too much with the painting. <laughs> so I created this on my Cricut and um, used my black vinyl. And I'm going to take the white wood board that I painted and I'm going to apply it to this. I think the word gather is very um, fitting for Halloween or Thanksgiving, so it's perfect. And um, I'm just uh, making sure it's lined up before I even try to take the uh, tape off. So this is what it looks like when I put the vinyl on. It's pretty cute looking. I like the letters. Perfect. So the wood pieces are all painted. Everything's done. Now on to the next step. So now I need to make like a stem for my little wood pieces. So I'm going to take these little, um, I don't even know what you call them, little wood chunks I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to hot glue them on all three of the, the wood pieces. Okay, so that's done. Now I'm going to take this ribbon I got from Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to cut a little piece and angle it um, to get that pretty angle. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the jute twine and I'm going to tie it off in the middle and then hot glue it down to the wood pieces. Now I'm going to take this Dollar Tree orange ribbon and I'm going to make a little tiny bow and I'm going to hot glue it down as well. So I'm just cutting the ends and angling it upward and leaving like a little tiny point. It's very cute. I told you the orange and the blue, it looks so adorable. Now I'm going to add a few leaves um, to the back of the little box area um, to give a little more color. And this is what it looks like. It's so adorable. I love the color. And here they all are, all finished and done. Tell me they don't look beautiful. I love the color contrast and the leaves just sets it off. So now I'm going to make a cloth uh, pumpkin that's going to go with um, the previous DIY. I took this checkered teal color or light blue color. It's so pretty. And I'm going to measure it. And I think I did about a 9 by 
I want to say 17, I think it was. So I'm taking my Dollar Tree rotary cutter and I'm just going to do a long strip of nine inches, I believe it is. Yeah, nine inches. So now I'm going to fold it in half and then I took my hot glue gun and I took the one end and used the hot glue gun which it didn't work in the end. I had to end up sewing it anyways but that's basically it. You take the side of the material and you sew it or you could take the hot glue gun. Okay, so now I turned it inside out and I'm going to start filling it with the polyfill and then I'm going to sew the top. Depending how thick you want the pumpkin is how much filling you put in. You can make it firm, you can make it loose. I didn't put that much in. Okay, so now it's it's to the top and I'm going to take my needle and thread and I'm just going to tie off a little knot in the corner and then I'm going to go in and out and weave in and out so this way at the end I could pull like a string, pull string and tighten it. Now when I pull it, it's um, it forms like a little pumpkin at the top, kind of like the shape and then I'm just going to tie it off with my needle and put a little knot at the top so it doesn't come apart. So I'm going through the top with my needle to the back end of the pumpkin and then I'm going to just start uh, forming like the pumpkin shape. You'll see it start to form as I uh, continue um, wrapping the thread around. Uh, it depends on how many sides you want. I, I think I did six. Okay, so now it's done. I went outside and I grabbed one of these from the tree and I'm going to use it for the pumpkin stem and I'm just putting some hot glue inside and then place the stem down. So to match the other wood boxes, I took the seam um, pumpkin color ribbon and some raffia and I'm going to hot glue it to the pumpkin. I think it came out pretty cute. I only made two of them. This is my second one. so pretty new at it but I think it's cute it matches the um, the whole set that I made uh, with the wood and the gather wood piece and uh, you'll see the end of it and here it is it looks awesome So for this DIY, I took the skull I got from Park City and these skull hands I got from Dollar Tree and this canvas that I got from Dollar Tree and these lights from Dollar Tree. I'll be using this black chalk paint from Dollar Tree and the elephant gray paint from Hobby Lobby. Also using this burnt umber and this antique wax or not antique antique white apple barrel from Hobby Lobby and this other brown paint. So I'm taking a paper towel and I'm going to start um, putting a little paint on it and go over the top of the skull with a combination of different colors. 
I'm going to start using the burnt umber first and just blotting it all around the skull. I'm trying to make him look more scarier than he looks. Now I'm using some ant uh, antique white with a little bit of the darker brown. I'm rubbing the darker brown all around his teeth area to make the grooves inside look prominent and then I'm going to put a little bit of the antique white over his teeth. So I'm just blotting all around trying to get inside the grooves of the skull. Doesn't he look creepy? <laughs> So I'm taking some of the burnt umber and the antique white and I'm just going inside his eyes and just going all around the skull trying to blend it together. Now I'm taking some of the black paint and I'm going to apply it to the little cracks of the skull to make it more prominent and uh, then I'm going to wipe it down. I didn't like the way his eyes look white so I put a little bit of burnt umber and black and gray inside. Now I'm taking the white chalk paint and I'm going to start applying it to the skull hands and some antique white and a little bit of the gray and burnt umber. So the hands match the skull, I'm just adding some burnt umber to it and just a little bit of the gray. So now I'm going to be working on the canvas. I'm taking some of this olive and gray and start painting the canvas with this color first. using the black chalk paint and then it's going to be blending it with the gray color trying to get that back screen effect it looks like dark mysterious look now i'm going to be taking the canvas and the skull and i'm going to try to measure um, the back end of the skull because i need it to come through the back so it can lay flat the reason why I use the canvas is because it's too hard to use wood to cut the wooden back, so the canvas was much easier. So now I'm going to measure the back where I need to cut. So I'm using my knife from Hobby Lobby, and I'm just going to cut a portion of the area that I traced out. Um, obviously, i got to make it bigger, so I'm just taking my time going smaller first, so this way I don't rip the canvas. So I'm putting the skull inside the canvas and making sure enough of it is coming out in the back end. And then once I have it where I want it, I'm going to start hot gluing it to keep it in place. But right now I'm just going to be cutting around the sides a bit with my Vecto knife and just making sure it's fitting properly. So I added some glue to the back of the skull. Now I'm attaching it to the canvas. Then I'm going to flip it over and add a little more hot glue. to come together so that look really cool. Now I'm going to take the skeleton hands and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put them on the side of the skull and put a little tiny slit of a hole and then hot glue it to the canvas. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. I did have to put a few popsicle sticks in the back just to support it. Because it's canvas, I had to put some hot, uh, hot popsicle sticks in the back to support the hands. Okay, so now that it's finished, I'm going to figure out how I'm going to place these lights. I decided to put them behind the canvas and I poked little holes with my little screwdriver in the back end of my paintbrush. This way it makes it easier to apply the little lights through it and then I hot glue them. I think this really came out amazing. I'm really, really happy what, how it turned out. So I'm just finishing the back of the lights and hot gluing them in place. And then I will reveal what it looks like. I mean, honestly, this is my favorite DIY I've ever made. So 
I'm just uh, hot gluing back the battery pack of the lights to the back of the canvas so it's easy access. Okay, this is awesome. I'm going to show you what it looks like with the lights on. I think it came out amazing. So creepy. I love it. What do you guys think? So I decided to add some spiders and I got these from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to put a few around his face and a little bit on the board. Okay, and here's the finished product. I hope you guys like it. I think it came out fantastic. Okay, last DIY, I took this Dollar Tree pumpkin. I'm going to be using Mod Podge. And I took this Dollar Tree candle that I previously painted black and some of these bats from Dollar Tree. I also took a couple pages out of a book and I cut some pieces down that I'm going to be using on the pumpkin. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pages that I ripped out of the book. I'm going to take some Mod Podge and apply it to the pages and on the pumpkin as well because I'm going to be applying the paper to the pumpkin. So I ripped out a couple pages from the book. It's a really easy um, project to do and it depends on what size you want to cut it down. I did it some small, some larger and just uh, apply the Mod Podge with the paper over the pumpkin and then put a coat of Mod Podge over it on top. So now I'm taking pumpkin hot glue and applying it to the candle holder and taking some of these bats and I'm going to hot glue them all around the pumpkin as well. Using some of these Dollar Tree purple flowers and I'm going to pluck them off and put them in the middle of the pumpkin on top of the pumpkin. And this is what it looks like when it's done. I think it came out really cute, very quick and easy, and great for Halloween. What do you guys think? Well, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for joining me again. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye.